Hey everyone, Roman Prokopchuk here, Ukraine War Update, October 11th, 2022. So Russia launches 83 missiles at Ukraine, kills 14, injures 97. Sweden won't share Nord Stream investigation findings with Russia. 15 Ukrainian oblasts partially cut off from the grid after Russia strikes. More than 1,170 kilometers were liberated in Kherson direction. Thus far, seven settlements liberated in Luhansk Oblast. The Russians have been planning missile strikes on the Ukrainian capital and infrastructure since the beginning of October. Russians reload warships with caliber missiles and prepare for new airstrikes. Ukraine suspends the electricity exports to stabilize the energy system. The United States to supply advanced air defense systems for Ukraine. Germany to quickly send air defense systems to Ukraine. Biden G7 to hold a virtual meeting Tuesday today on Ukraine support. So the missile strikes and drone strikes are obviously ongoing. This has been pre-planned and premeditated. Basically, the Kerch Bridge used as a scapegoat because they're simply collapsing on the battlefield. Only real place that they're kind of pushing or trying to gain land is Bakhmut. Uh, basically, that is the only place for the most part that, uh, and it's house to house fighting. So, in Luhansk Oblast and Donetsk Oblast and in Kherson, Ukraine is regaining territory. So by Vladimir Putin really saying that uh, he's only doing this as a retaliatory measure because of the explosion on the Kerch Bridge, that it was a terrorist act and we're going to respond to terrorism, that's all nonsense. It's all smoke and mirrors. It's all propaganda coming out. Like They, they had this plan all along. Um, a lot of the missiles that they're actually shooting are... Uh, in terms of cost, ten around ten to fifteen million dollars. So the amount that that they're expending on this, in terms of the missile strikes, are you know hundreds of millions of dollars alone, daily thus far, and targeting infrastructure, targeting civilian structures and areas, to, uh, targeting people on their way to work. So I mean, obviously, it's it's really disgusting. Germany to speed up their you know, air defense system shipments to Ukraine. Germany has been running their mouth this whole time and dragging their feet and not getting approval. So it's kind of sad that something like this uh, puts the fire under Germany and Germany being pushed by other NATO countries to provide what they already said they were to provide. They've been flip-floppy this whole time, providing tanks, not providing tanks, providing this, that, or the other to appease Vladimir Putin, to keep those gas prices low this whole time, afraid of energy because they've been energy dependent on Russia. So, I mean, it is what it is. It looks like uh, Ukraine possibly is getting a new shipment of uh, anti aircraft uh, systems, not only from Germany, but the U S since the U S has been the largest supplier and it's, it's going to be interesting in terms of how much of the un uh, incoming missiles and drones Ukraine can stop. It looks like a large number of the missiles and kamikaze drones and other uh, drones that have been used. The, uh, the, the, I guess the Iranian drones, They've been shot down. So obviously with better uh, defense systems, Ukraine can, you know, hold the sky and protect their cities. But up until now, I, I really don't know how much longer. I mean, this is day two of a really calculated strike on Ukrainian cities in terms of missile attacks. A lot of which, like I've stated, are coming from the Black Sea and launched from the sea. Uh, Odessa has been hit as well. So across the board, even Lviv, uh, at the closest biggest city to the Polish border, which has had strikes in the past. They had a, a training facility for the International Legion uh, struck early in the war. They've had infrastructure being hit, but in a while there hasn't been anything. So this this continues to to develop obviously um ukraine in terms of their counteroffensives, they're still pushing obviously it's a lot uh slowing down in terms of logistics not to stretch themselves thin 
it is kind of a rainy season, so the uh, the moving and the rapid advance is a little bit tougher. In Kherson, it's it's very open, so like the ground isn't necessarily held or rooted by you know root systems in terms of forests and things of that nature. So it can get really muddy really quickly in terms of the farmland, but the Kherson offensive is still pushing from the uh, northern side uh based on the uh the broken line the russian lines that have occurred uh early last week so that's still ongoing but i really appreciate everyone listening slava ukraini heroim slava slava nazi slava bohu heroim slava god bless